Hi, this is Bobby Klein. I'm the translator and the interpreter of the I Ching. This is a new earth I Ching, easy to understand, easy to put to use. It's an oracle, 3,000 years of wisdom wrapped up in this. So sit back, take a breath. If you've got a question in your mind, ask it. If not, just hang in and you'll get some answers. And that's what this is all about. The I Ching, they say, is the book of change, and it is, but it's also the book of answers. All right. Tune in. Drop in. You're home. Yeah. You're home. Dragonflies dipping, touching the clear pond's water, iridescent wings. The beauty in the garden <clears throat> feeds the soul. My eyes are the window to the soul. Fill your eyes with the beauty that's around you and take it all in. That's a haiku. It's kind of reminder. To, reminder to have the, the innocence of the child. Remember the first time you saw a dragonfly? You know, that innocence. And it seems like it was out there for so long. And watched it and watched the colors. We've got to come back to that in our life, you know. <clears throat> to have our innocence and not lose our innocence. This week, it's number seven. Quasi number seven, the collective. <clears throat> and isn't that, excuse me, and that is really what this time is about. It's about us gathering together. Gathering together in the collective, number seven. Two, two trigrams in the hexagram above is center of the earth and below is the precipice that danger of swift flowing water, so we've got to be on, on, on time. The wisdom says, power to the people. Back in the 60s, the wisdom says, power to the people. Bring your legions together. Alone you will survive. Move together and you will prosper. What lies ahead in your situation is nothing less than great. It will require great risk. So get ready. It's going to require great risk to achieve even moderate gains. And not that your gain is restricted in any way. It's quite the opposite. In fact, the field is wide open. The potential is greater than great. The access to your fulfillment of desires is risk. Yeah, that's right. You've got, got to let it go. You've got to give it up and just jump in. Go head first. There is implicit in this reading, in this hexagram, the cosmological metaphor of being at war, it says. We're at war. At war with all that has held you and the whole of humanity back from the physical environment and spiritual leap of faith that is necessary and possible at this particular energetic shift on Earth. And our Earth is in jeopardy. And we see it all around us. She, this hexagram, says that to clear the way for yourself, for your family, and your collective, your tribe, you can no longer be the ordinary civilian, standing by, observing the rush of the activities, flooding through your personal reality scene. You must enter the fray by accepting the mantle of leadership in your personal journey, and among the collective. This means basic human responsibility. Your responsibility to the greater good. We all have that responsibility. That comes along with the gift of being human. The benefit is waiting as you carefully and thoroughly align your inner life with the movement forward. 
You can marshal your inner forces now and set about revving to meet the challenge because the challenges are coming. There's some very real forces, both on the inner and the outer levels of experience, that have been triggered as a response to your quest. This is about you. Your quest for achieving progress and for bringing completion to your plan of attaining contentment and peace of mind. Ah, oh, yeah, and that's where we go, you know? And that's what we do. We do this to be better people. We do this so we have peace of mind. And sometimes we got to enter the fray. We've got to fight for what we want sometimes, you know? You're the leader of your quest, so don't look outside for the answers. It's not going to be there. You know, you're your own leader, see, and you're called into service. And service in this case is not a whimsical venture, man. It's a vital component, right? Be disciplined as you marshal your inner forces, your legions. This challenge or this test, if you will, must be met with an organized plan that is directed not by the ego, hmm? but by trusting your inner knowing, the conjunction, the conjunctio, as Jung, Jung says, the conjunctio of heart and mind, anima, animus. You will not be harmed. Don't worry. You will emerge victorious. Emerging victorious will come if you meet the coming challenges. And how you meet them is what it's about. You meet them with integrity, with compassion and honesty. It might be a situation. It might be a, something happening in your world, something happening in your tribe. It might be your relationship. It might be your job. It might be your moving forward that you're getting it. It might be a person coming towards you. Well, you can do it, man, because you jump in and you do it with integrity. That means staying honest. You do it with compassion as His Holiness teaches us and you do it with honesty. Honesty where you cut out those lies that you've been telling yourself. As you neutralize or defeat the negative forces that are around you or the negative influences, you're going to find yourself emerging victorious with the achievement of having merged with the great cosmic flow, right? So, you know, it's, I mean, in a way it sounds kind of heavy, but it really is, it's what we're floating through. It's what we do. You know, these things that come, come by, we deal with them as they come. You know, that, that keeps us in the flow. Because the abundance is here, you see. The, your abundance package is unfolding. And don't fall prey to the ego. The ego making noise in the background, right? Yep, yep, yep. Making noise, attempting to lure you into a victory lap down the red carpet amid the flashing and clicking of the imagined paparazzi, right? So as you're doing well, just be chill, you know? Don't bling it out, right? Just, you know, as things go good, it's not the ego will say, hey, you know, let's show ourselves. Let's take a lap. We're doing so well. Not about that right now. It's about, because then you, you, you blow your energy. It's gone. And, and it doesn't support you. But by being humble, this energy comes to calm your mind and will nourish your heart. Let your victory, because you are coming into victory. That is the good news. Let it quietly benefit all as all are in need of healing. And stay in the flow. Stay in the flow that you've sacrificed so much for. You know, you've given up stuff to be clear. Still your mind. Still your mind. And use these gains. There's new gains coming. They're coming, you know. It's currency's coming. You know, strength, energy, money, power, whatever it is, relationship, love, sex, whatever it is coming your way. Bring us some, bring, bring us simplicity to your life. Like elegance, you know, an elegant simplicity as you share the benefits through sharing love and respect with all around you. 
Less is the way of display. <laughs> Less in the way of display is indeed at this juncture in the time wave. Right? Don't be showing off. Deconstruct the fears that are deep within you because you are coming to a time of abundance. And be ruthless with yourself as you examine your penchant for drama and fear, right? You know, that addiction to drama. We've seen it, you know, this, all right, thing, I don't know where I'm headed, so I think I'll start a fight. <laughs> or I'm going to make it dramatic, or I'm going to embellish it, or I'm going to lie. Oh, don't do that. Right? So uh, your truth now is what you bring up. And you, you bring the truth to the lies that you've told yourself about not being good enough or you're too late. Hmm, have you heard that one? You know, you know that, that, that's the negative ego. That's the, that, that's the shadow talking to you. Critics say, ah, you're not good enough. You know, you're too late. Ah, you missed the boat. That's just bullshit. No, it's not true, you see, that we are good enough and we're right on time, you know. We're right on time and we're in the right place. Like I've said, look at your feet. Where are your feet? See them? See your feet? They're in the right place at the right time. So are you. Right? So when we understand that, that we're not too late and, and that we are good enough for whatever it is, right? You move beyond that fear that you're not up to the task. But the task of leadership, don't be afraid of it. You know, is it that you're concerned that if you if you take such a blatant and sometimes outrageous risk to face everything boldly, fearlessly, that you will fail, right? Because that's what the ego will say. If you put yourself out there and you be the warrior and you be the leader, man, you're going to fail. Ah, but that's not true. In this, you cannot fail. The nature of the quest is such that those who enter with integrity and compassion cannot fail. See, magic, magic, magic. Alchemy, alchemy, that's it, you know. I'll say it again. The nature of the quest is such that those who enter with integrity and compassion cannot fail. Once you've assumed the role and proper level of leadership, right? coming into leadership, do not be afraid and have taken the first step into risk consciousness, you will be nourished by the influence of awaiting abundance. Well, look at that. You know, and that's in, and when you trust that and when you see that that's what happens, you know, it unfolds. And it unfolds in the best possible way. All you got to do is start. Cross the line in the sand that's right in front of you. And you're there. You're right where you need to be. Don't doubt that. You see, it's here in that place that you will have the vision. You will have the strength and you will have the confidence that you want and need to accomplish the goals of this sacred journey, this life journey. The role of being in support of Gaia and support of community. The growth this will bring will benefit your relationships, will benefit your tribe, your associates, all sentient beings, and most of all, will work on the inner planes to free you, to feed your spirit, and bring you in touch with your authenticity and the interconnected whole. Because we are there, we're connected, see? You know, we're gathering by the river, all of us right now. You know, it's about society. We're gathering by the river. Now, by the river is where you bring in all your forces. You know, you marshal your forces. And, and, and these forces that you have, you make them useful by taking this transformational leap into risk. There it is again. You see the risk of being guided by and trusting fully your intuition, you got it? Your intuition will never let you down. So when you begin to trust your intuition, you're going to open your eyes and your heart, and you will not be in fear. You will be in initiation, and that's what's happening right now. And once you made the leap, you're in movement. Always being aware that risk is your companion. Your energetic fuel, that's not your enemy, right? 
That's not an obstacle that's here. You're taking a risk, and you're jumping in, and you know well the work that you've done for yourself. You know, it, it's you can you know you, you studied, you paid attention, you've gained knowledge. You know, you've gone through self improvements. You've made them right. You've learned techniques to bring about equanimity. Think about that. Consider the accidental lessons that come as a shocking surprise that at first fills you with fear and, gracefully or not, moved you into the heart of the soul. Now, as you're facing a karmic challenge, whether in your business, your relationships, your family, your art, your health, or in the sense of place, in your emotional life, your physical life, your spiritual well-being, you're called on to gather these scattered elements and bring them together. And that's what you do. That's what the sentient being, the warrior, that's what you do. You are the warrior. You're all the warriors here, the heroes, heroines, as you make these moves for yourself and you become the leader. You're the leader of your own movement, man. Step up. And women, sorry, you know, I get in trouble. They say, probably say man so much, but it's just, you know, I'm from the 60s, man. <laughs> but that's with these actions, see. You're going to triumph. And you're going to become one with your inner light and your powerful, well-honed inner forces. You're not alone. You know, the universe is watching. And spirits, you know, loving, sweet spirits, spirit is recognizing you. And as you're doing these things and your actions of risk and taking the chance and moving ahead, this pleases spirit. These are blessings. See, you're called. You're called now to the collective to roll with your helpers on this adventure, this great adventure of initiation, because that's what you're coming into. Look to your helpers, your spirit helpers. Look to them. You know, because some of you call them angels or energies or whatever they are. They're there. You find them in silence. You find them, and you just hear the voice, and you, and, and and they're there. And you may have wonderful people around you, right, who are going to roll with you. Well, with those people, what you do is you point out their strengths, right? You know, don't judge them. Don't judge that they have weaknesses or don't judge your own. You look at your strength and you consider that you have an army of companions, whether near or far, that will support you and be fueled to carry you across the great divide, the place where divine spirit emerges and connects you with all. We are all one. We are connected. Allow your intuition to point the way. Trust the oneness, for it is oneness that you will find that you are not alone. And it's the oneness that we believe in. You know, these are busy times and kind of scary times on earth. What's happening with floods and fires and, you know, it's, it's so many people are in such a tough place. And for those of us that are, that, are, that are in good shape, the ones who are doing well, what we do is we become generous by helping. If it might be energy or moving or even just sending loving and good thoughts, you know, that's what the time is about for all of us to have peace, you know, to walk with peace and to, and to teach peace and to have the wonder of children at the beauty around us. Because as we do that, as we see and recognize the beauty of Gaia, the beauty of the earth, that feeds her and everybody. It feeds the bees and the trees and the plants and the birds and the horses and the cattle. Everybody gets fed by this right now. Right? As you're opening up these doorways, it's like a flowering is happening on earth, right? You know, in meditations, we go back and, and, and it, we imagine, and I believe it's true, we imagine what the earth was like before, before um, man started to mess with it. 
that there were, and this I know is true just from history, that there were forests all across the world, great beautiful forests, great plains of, of beauty and wildflowers and beautiful clear waters and clear streams and all kinds of different birds. And man, we've, we've messed it up. But by imagining it and seeing it, that is what's the new earth. You know, the name of my, the book that I did, the, the New Earth I Ching, it's because we're coming into a new earth, right? That's what these readings are from. It's from the book. It's in Amazon. It's by me, and it's called The New Earth I Ching. And because there's a new earth coming, and I believe it's a new golden age of love and spirit and us coming together. And this is called the collective, and that is in the collective, you know, where it comes from. You know, and uh, Carl Jung, you know, talked about the collective and how we join together in the conjunctio and how that we come as, as, uh, a, 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 as one and we can tap into the collective, right? When we're, when we're troubled or we need strength, man, we come to stillness and tap into the collective and the answers are going to be there. You know how it happens. You see all around the world that great inventions happen at the same time in different parts of the world because the, the, the collective is there. Everything is there for us, right? So the haiku this week again is dragonflies dipping, touching the clear pond's water, iridescent wings. Yeah, you've seen that. Teach the children well. Teach them about peace, right? Oh, Graham Nash wrote about teach the children well so they may know their father's hell, right? That we teach them so they know about light and they know about love and they know that, you know, you know, you got to tell kids it's going to be hard sometimes. But be strong. We talk about risk and talk to your family. Talk to your kids about risk. That risk is okay, you know, you don't, don't do stupid risks. <laughs> you know, you don't jump off the top of the garage like I did as a kid and broke my ankle. <laughs> but you don't take stupid risks, but you take these risks of, of spirit and of love and really opening up. And how about that risk of seeing somebody that you want to talk to, right? Take the risk and go up to them. The worst that can happen is they don't talk to you, right? But we're going to somebody we want to meet. We make it so we can meet them, you know? I'm going to a, a, a gathering at Esalen in Big Sur in a few weeks where people are going to come there to meet and talk about the state of the world, state of the economy, the state of the things are. And we're going to be talking. And do that in your life. Gather people together. Talk about what is. Talk about what can be done because we can do a lot if we come together in love. Because the bottom line is love and that's what it's all about. And I love you. And there's no doubt about that. <laughs> well, I love talking to you. I don't know if I mentioned it. We just looked at the stats. We're in 110, 111 countries around the world. It excites me. I feel very good about that. We the good that our message is out there and, and bringing it to. Well, here, you know, I, okay, you hear me talking about R. Like there's more, you know, like I, there's more than one of me. You know, here, it, the way it works for me, is I come to write at once a week. Well, if I'm doing a book, I'm doing it more. But I come to write the I Ching every week. And I sit down in my office, my normal place, and I wait. And I, it's tapping into the collective or whatever. And I absolutely feel that I have helpers come. And these helpers come and help me write. And then I write and I write the words and I bring those words to you. And oftentimes I'll do it. I'll write it and I'll read it. And, and it seems unfamiliar, but I like it. And I'll have to say, wow, uh, that guy's good. <laughs> you know, that is it is good. And I, 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 I want to bring that to y'all from the 20th parallel here in Mexico. Uh, and I send you love to wherever you are in the world. I want you to celebrate whatever country you're in. Celebrate your country. Celebrate your roots. Celebrate your ancestors. Go back into your indigenous times. You know, we all, if we go back far enough to our indigenous peoples, it's all there. And there's great wisdom there. And if you find the elders are speaking somewhere, go listen to the elders. 
if the poets are speaking, if the painters are painting, go see what they're doing. Remember, artists and writers and poets are channels for what we need to know. You know, that's why we go. You know, why do you go to openings of art or that? We go because there's messages. You know, it's not always just to buy the painting, which is cool if you can, but it's to get the messages that come. It's all coming in so many different ways, coming in writing, in books, in art, in song, and the great songs and great songwriters, right? So many. And I think about the songwriters that were around when I was a kid, you know, and Joan Baez, who changed the world, man, and, and uh, uh, Dylan, and you know, what Dylan did and wrote and that we became activists in our way and it's time to be an activist and to be in action and that's about the collective that's taking care of the collective taking care of the center of the earth taking the risks walking across the dangerous pond and all the while being loved as I send you all the love that I can possibly muster from down here at the 20th parallel. A little office in my closet, and <laughs> it's true. Big closet, but it's true. The Mayans, there's a greeting, and it's, it's a hello and a goodbye. And it's, in la kesha la kin. I am the other you. And I say, in la kesha la kin. I am the other you. And I like it that way. Yes. Uh, be the best person that you can be and share your light and share your love and touch the ones that need to be touched touch them with your eyes smile as you walk down the street be sure you're taking good care of yourself hydrate with clean water you know just eat the cleanest food that you can possibly eat Keep balance, feed the body, the body feeds the mind, the body feeds, you know, the body is the temple of the soul where that soul lives. So you take care of that body and nurture yourself. And you know, you don't have to look for somebody else to nurture you. You got not back. Oh, nobody is nurturing me. That's not what it's about. Give it to yourself, right? Give it to yourself. That foot massage you do for yourself, that's pretty lovely, huh? Or oils and all that. Anyway. I can see it all. <laughs> Have a beautiful week. Be the love that you desire. Namaste. Namaste, you heroines, goddesses, and namaste, you men, you beautiful guys out there. Namaste to y'all. And that's what I say. Namaste, y'all. Namaste. Go dancing. Make love, not war. Be romantic. Bring romance into your life. Love is the answer. Namaste, y'all.